Hello, I'm Dr. Leibovitz, your go-to foot doctor, and we're going to go over post-operative instructions today. Our surgery patients will have a pink sheet that has all these instructions on them. This is a little bit more informative. The first thing you're going to read on there is the control swelling, and that's going to be elevation and ice. Extremely important to control your discomfort levels. Uh, controlling the swelling will take about 60% uh, of your discomfort away without ever having to take medicine. And the other benefit too with less swelling will have early motion and that always aids into a faster recovery time. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to elevate the foot and the foot we want to uh, elevate above the heart. That's the big key issue. Uh, gravity is the big factor that we're trying to defeat here and that's a tremendous foe. If I have a glass of water and it spills the water always goes downward and that's where our fluids will go. So if your foot is below your heart, it's going to go down to your foot. If it's above your heart, we're going to have a big advantage and it's going to uh, go away. The other thing at nighttime, uh, it's very easy. Just elevate the foot of your bed a couple inches, maybe three, uh, two to three inches of books under the foot of your bed. And no matter where you roll, whether you're a, sleep, a stomach sleeper, a side sleeper, your foot's always elevated. You could use pillows, but if you roll off the pillows, we've lost that advantage. So again, when you look at the horizon, you want to see nose and your toes at the same level. The other thing that will help tremendously with swelling is ice. Uh, most of our surgery patients will receive a circulating pump from the surgery center uh, and what you'll do is you'll preemptively freeze small bottles of water that you'll put in the reservoir and replace those as needed. Otherwise you can use just regular ice but you go through that pretty rapidly. Um, the, the ice part of that, the, the sleeve will go behind your knee and that will be continuous for the first couple weeks. A tremendous aid as far as controlling swelling as well as discomfort because if we cool down the nerves below 50 to 60 degrees you've got an entirely numb extremity. Um, so to demonstrate, oh, one other thing about the, the swelling is food sources. If you're not getting around as, as much as you typically do following a surgery, you're going to go after the easiest possible foods and beware. The convenient foods, uh, snacks, uh, lunch meats, uh, sodas, canned soups, and canned vegetables are all high in sodium. Even though you may not be a sweller to begin with, those might put you over the limit. So if it's difficult to get your rings off, uh, it's because of swelling, that's not because of your foot. So the key with this one is to get your toes above your nose. And when you're laying flat, that's pretty simple. If you're sitting straight up, that can be pretty difficult because you're going to be bent into a U. Now, right now I'm looking out and at my horizon, I can see my toes and that's going to do extremely well. And it's going to eventually pull fluid down to my leg and into my body. Uh, and that's exactly what we want. The second point on the post-operative instructions is taking your temperature. And this is very important. What we're monitoring for is infection. If you get a rise in temperature above a 100, I'm going to be very interested in that and we need to take a look at the foot. Both my office and home phone number are on there. Now the fourth point on the post-operative instructions deals with your weight-bearing status. If you're required to be non-weight-bearing, you'll be in a posterior splint that will look like this, only a little bit larger. This is used uh, or held on with two ace wraps and is used to help protect the foot and immobilize it. It was also very good for keeping anything off the end of your foot. So for the first couple days after surgery, that's something you would probably want to continue to wear during bed. After, your, after that, if you feel more comfortable, you're welcome to take the ace wraps off uh, and, and move the ankle around. And we'll talk about motion and what's allowed. Another thing that's important, this foam liner in here is a very good insulator and will collect a lot of perspiration. So if you can put a small towel uh, in the heel area, that will help collect that and prevent a lot of the soft tissue irritation. Now, once you're done with this, after around two to four, maybe possibly six weeks, you'll progress to a post-operative boot. And these have a Nelsch rocker bottom that allows good stability, it allows fairly normal walking in there. This also has a compression component that you'll be able to inflate and that will help control swelling. Um, this is when you want to be worn, this will be worn whenever you put weight on the foot. Uh, if you're right-footed and you're a driver, this cannot be worn and we'll give you permission and tell you when you can start driving, uh, possibly get into an athletic shoe. Now, when you wear this and you start developing possibly hip or back problems, that may be there's a leg length discrepancy. And we have an addition that can be put on the opposite side on an athletic shoe that will help stabilize that and level that out. So let us know if that becomes a problem. If you are allowed to put weight on the foot, you may be using a very light post-operative shoe. It's very stiff and keeps you from bending the foot and, and it should be very easy to use. So remember, your weight-bearing status is important and is critical to recovery. If you start pushing it and decide to go in by your own rules, that could extend your, your surgery or even possibly require another one. So no weight-bearing is just that, no weight-bearing. So the fifth item on your post-operative instructions is keeping the foot dry. Now this is really important because if the wet dressing does get wet, that has a likelihood of wicking in bacteria along with the fluid and that it makes our infection rate go up and that's the last thing we want to do. 
Uh, most people feel that they can red bag it in small bags over there with a rubber band. That will leak. Uh, and if it leaks uh, and get the dressing gets wet, I need to know about that. Again, both my uh, office as well as cell phone number are on the pink sheet. I need to be contacted about that uh, to get that dressing changed. We do have cash protectors available in the office. Those do a very, very good job of protecting the entire extremity um, to keep them dry and so you can bathe normally. Uh, but otherwise, you need to keep the, the dressing dry. That's really important. The last thing on the list is medication. Um, the medication you have for pain is, is needed, um, but if we try to limit the swelling and control it with elevation and ice, you'll be surprised how little medication you'll need. Uh, after the fact, if it's kind of a background noise where it's constant, that's from the surgery. If it's a pounding type of sensation, that's from swelling, and we need to elevate and ice. The, and if, you've, if you start walking and start keeping the extremity low, you may have to go back to ice. Uh, the medication, the rule of thumb is if you can't sleep comfortably and it's keeping you awake, that's a good time to take it. Now, you're welcome uh, to take half tabs if needed um, and make sure you, you take food with your, with your medication because if you don't, all the medications, including the anti-inflammatories, will upset your stomach and that puts it in a tough situation where you do have pain and then you can't take any medication at all. So take the medication as prescribed and only as needed. If you're not having pain, there's no need to take the medication.